Hello and welcome to the Academy of the Magical Art. I am Frater Ophiel and today we are going to be talking about vibration and frequency. Some of the other people that I am working with on this channel are going to be talking about magic and spell work and things like this coming up here soon. We're going to have a uh, video on honey jars and uh, prosperity sweetening spells posted shortly and a couple of other things but before that can happen i think that it's important to lay a little bit of foundation on why these things will work on um, how this magic works on a little bit of a deeper level today we are going to talk about first the principle of vibration this is one of the seven hermetic principles um, these principles can be found in a book that is called the kybalion if you go to the Hermeticism folder, um, we'll be having information on Hermeticism and a more in-depth look at the seven Hermetic principles and the Emerald Tablets of Thoth updated soon. So the principle of vibration says very simply that nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Um, this is not really a hard concept to understand, um, but to understand it in depth and um, the reality that this principle holds over our physical universe is very important. This principle embodies um, a very simple truth to us and that is that everything is constantly in motion at all times. This is a fact that modern science is now starting to endorse um, our technology that we have is able to prove these things in front of our very eyes. We're going to discuss a couple of the experiments that verify that. Um, first, I want to take a look at the atom. If you take a look at the atom, the atom is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, positive particles, negative particles, and neutral particles. These particles move and work in a very, very similar way. They appear um, to rotate and to move in a very similar way that the rest of the universe does. So this is our first example of as above, so below. These particles are made up of something even smaller, looking at uh, even more microscopic level. Protons, neutrons, and electrons are made up of a particle that is called a photon. Now, photons are very simply light particles. So in layman's terms, everything is made of light. This is a shock to some and not a shock to others. I'll tell some people that very, very simple fact, and they can look it up on any sourceable or reliable website and find out that it's true, but it's shocking um, because of something that is called the law of observation or the observer effect. The observer effect refers to changes during the act of observation. Um, this can apply to all kinds of things, but here we're going to talk about it applying to the photon. Um, when scientists were trying to look at and measure photons initially, they noticed that a phenomenon would happen and these photons or particles would collapse down into waves. They would alter their state under observation. This is oftentimes referred to a phenomenon that is called the wave function collapse which basically asserts that the measurement itself is causing the discontinuous change to occur. And once we have measured or observed this photon being in this state, it will now cease to be in any of the other states that it once took, meaning that the measurement that we do on the system affects the state of the entire system. And this is oftentimes referred to as the quantum Zeno effect. Um, so basically, if this thing stopped being observed this way, it would collapse and decay. This then led us into uh, Bell's theorem and things like quantum entanglement, you know, which they have then, which scientists have expounded upon further, and they've done experiments where they'll do um, things like splitting a particle through the use of a mirror and sending one half miles in one direction and one half miles in the other direction. I think they did this in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, a scientist named Nicholas Giesen did this experiment initially, um, and they, they would isolate these particles from each other, two pieces of the same hole, miles and miles apart, like I said, and then they would tickle a particle with like a, a little jolt of electricity or something, and the other half of it would react with 
um, the part that was being affected faster than the speed of light. So this was happening instantaneously. They reacted faster than the light would even be able to get to it um, if it was being sent like through a signal or something. So really that, that shows us how connected we all are. There are there are laws that affect our universe that if they are observed on the smallest level, you can guarantee that they are affecting us on a large level. So understanding that once these two photons are connected, once they, even if they are, once something is connected, even if it appears to be separate from the other thing, it never really is. Once two, two particles entangle themselves with each other, they're never really separate again. They can, one can be used to affect the other. That's why things like magical anchors, um, when the video on the honey jars is posted, Agape Moon will discuss using a name paper as part of this honey jar that's called a magical anchor. We'll be producing a video on magical anchors in various different types in time to come. But the reason why this works is because once something begins to entangle itself with a thing, um, it never stops being entangled with that. It never stops affecting the other. To some, this would be referred to as the law of contingent. Um, two objects being in physical contact with each other will continue to interact after separation. It's just something that works that way. That's why we, as magical practitioners, have to go through and cleanse things and consciously separate them. We have to observe them as being separate in order to cause that separation to take place. Because if not, it will continue to carry the energy of whatever it was previously linked to for an indefinite period of time. Particles don't just separate themselves. So going back to the law of vibration, nothing rests, all things vibrate, all things are always in motion. Everything is pure vibratory energy. Nothing is still, nothing is solid. Um, we are made of small light particles, which build up protons, neutrons, and electrons, which build up our physical matter. Small light particles and empty space. This is our physical reality. Now that we have an understanding on some of these basic principles, along with a basic understanding of the principle of, of vibration, we can put this to some practical application. Um, so next I want to talk to you about synthesis. Synthesis is when one thing joins with another thing. So the law of synthesis is any combination of two energy forms will then result or create a third energy form, which is more complex than the original two. Very simple example of this. A male and a female energy come together. I don't care what animal or life form you're talking about. They come together and they procreate. They create a third energy that carries energies of the original two parent energies and makes a vibration completely unique on its own. Okay, so this is synthesis. Now, let's talk about how we're synthesizing our energies for or what we can do to um, synthesize our energies the way we want them to. Humans, although we are photons, um, atoms, and empty space, uh, we have conscious energy ourselves, and our states are constantly changing based on what we are around. So as magical practitioners, I feel that it is very important that we pay very close attention to the vibratory state of our physical, energetic, and mental bodies, having all three in our composition, our spiritual anatomy, if you will. Um, and what we can do to keep this in a state that we want. It's like uh, tuning a piano, taking all these different sounds, all these different frequencies, and putting them together and making this one harmonic instrument. We are comprised of a bunch of different frequencies, and sometimes some of those frequencies will get tossed out of whack. You know, life will throw a hammer at the instrument and just come, cause it to go out of tune. So what can we do to uh, tune it the way we want it, and what can we do to keep it there? We will continue talking about the law of synthesis and what we can do to uh, positively affect what we are synthesizing with, what we can do to positively affect ourselves and keep our vibratory frequency pure uh, in the next video to come. We're getting ready to run out of time here, so I'll have to expound upon that a little bit later. Thank you for joining with me today at the Academy of the Magical Art. Stay tuned for part two on vibration and frequency and until next time blessed be